Hey everybody, it's Spicy Kai. Today I'm starting a four part series on the four main ways women, girls, and sometimes boys are lured into the sex trafficking game. Believe it or not, the most popular way is not about abductions or kidnappings. The most popular way is the one we're gonna discuss today. And that would be the lover boy effect. Some people call it the lover boy game the lover boy transition. There's so many words for it, but you will definitely hear the term lover boy. And it's basically all about wooing a woman, making her feel like he's in love with her, and then and then gradually just tricking her into the life. Check this out. But before we get started, why don't you go ahead and hit that thumbs up for me. And if you're new to my channel, go ahead and click that subscribe button. And be sure to click the notification bell so you get notified every time I drop a new video about the sex trafficking going on in America. Now let's get to the content. You know, I had men calling at me from across at the truck stop, asking me do I need help and shit. You know, I, I was, I'm, all, I, I'm so glad I can stand my ground and I'm aware to certain shit like this, but just think about the naive or somebody's little girl or anything, bro. You know what I'm saying? It's sick and it really happens and these niggas don't talk about it. They don't put no coverage on it. They don't care. They don't try to help you. They don't try to figure it out. Everybody has a foot in this shit. It's sick. It's so sick. It's inhumane and humans are doing it. A sex trafficker or a pimp forces others to do sexual acts for money and then takes that money. The pimp's victims become slaves. We want to warn you that traffickers use tricks to get boys and girls under their complete control. Interviewing Melissa was one of the hardest things for me on the entire trip. Her story is the result of the lover boy method. She came from a family who wasn't really around. Her parents didn't have a large role in her life. And so she was looking for love and she found it in this man. And he wined and dined her for the first few months, gained her trust, and then promised her the world. Once he thinks that he's gained her trust, he says, let's go abroad because we can't make money in Romania. I know a friend in construction or a friend in restaurants. I'll save some money and we'll have a nice wedding. What he did was he came home uh, beaten up, and of course the girl asked, you know what happened to you, why you're all beaten up? Finally he told her after a couple of days and said, you know, I got into some debt here, and guys are chasing me, and they're stealing my money, they're beating me up, blah, blah, blah. These traffickers know how to pick the girls who are most vulnerable. And then the girl says, okay, what can I do to help? And he says, you know, it's the last thing I could have asked you to do, I hate it, but I know a guy that has a bar, and he can be a prostitute there, and pay the debt off, and then it'll stop on it. And so she prostituted herself for three years. A lot of times they just beat him up and say, okay, I don't care, this is what you're gonna do. She told me that the trafficker uh, beat her with a hammer. And the lover boy method gained their trust, and now they're all confused. Something's wrong here, you know, because he's been good with me for six months. What's, what's happened? For this girl, when she met a new guy, and this could happen to anyone. My friends have been hanging out with uh, a, a new group of guys that I had never met before. There was one guy, one particular guy that was obviously showing interest in me and um, we spent some time together when I was here for spring break and he definitely came off as very charming and he was obviously wealthy and we talked every day several times a day and it was all so intense and so there was so much love instant love i guess i had never really had boyfriends in high school so I, I didn't know what I felt at the time. I was eight. I had just turned 18. He convinced me that I should come down to his 
live with, with him. Part of me just didn't know what I was doing and it was, there was definitely a lot of emotions involved. I was scared but excited and thought I was completely in love with this person. He just was treating me like a princess. Like, I just felt like he was the only person that cared about me and he, nobody else cared. He had her heart. Now he used his tricks to get her to do what he had planned all along. I remember just him kind of bringing these things up like, oh, you know, I have such and such idea and, you know, there, there's not, there's all this money that can be made and you'd be perfect and, you know, you're so beautiful and, um, you know, uh, and a lot of guys would love to spend time with you and, you know, there's guys that will spend a lot of money to spend time with you and you don't have to do anything. You don't have to do anything you don't want to do. This, these are all things that I remember being said to me. Uh, every girl sleeps around with guys. They just don't get paid for it. They're just hoes and whores and they they do it for free he um, had these pictures posted of me um, and on internet websites and would and put my phone number with them and all of a sudden I was just getting all these phone calls the first time that he kind of like convinced me to actually act on what he was saying. We stayed in a hotel and he was like, okay, someone might call you and want to come see you. It was so downplayed by him and it was so not a big deal and nonchalant. I just remember, um, you know, someone calling me and, you know, wanting to see me and they came the choice she made that night changed her life forever. She became her lover boy's slave, making money for her pimp for three years. Some of my favorite hobbies are collecting porcelain dolls and um, playing soccer, of course. JS grew up in a typical middle-class home with a great family. I was a, a happy kid. I did sports, played musical instruments, violin, piano. I was really kind of like the jack of all trades, wanted to do everything. I was really happy. <laughs> At 15 years old, she started to fall behind in one of her classes. Scared to show her parents her report card, she made a plan. I ran away, got on a city bus, never done that. Didn't even know how city buses worked. I was like, everything's fine. She made her way to a homeless shelter where she met a young woman who promised to help take care of her. The two went to a party where she was raped. Before that party, she was a virgin. I wanted to keep my innocence for like a, a special person and like I, I wasn't able to. Okay, I have to intervene here because the way they're telling the story, it's making it a little confusing. So I'm going to break it down to you exactly how it happened. She got the bad grade in school. She felt ashamed, so she decided to run away. While she was out there on the street somewhere at a shelter, she met this lady who invited her to a party. That's where she got raped. Obviously, the lady set that up. She was only gone for about 10 days. Somewhere in that 10 days, she decided to take her butt home. Because while she was out, she got raped, that was more shame for her to deal with. And that was something she couldn't even look her parents in the face and discuss with them. And because she could not get over the shame and the guilt of being raped, she decided to run away again after about two months. This is what happened when she ran away the second time. She then met Baruti Hobson, who invited her to stay with him. Within days, the 15-year-old was having sex with Hobson and started working for him as a prostitute. Hobson took provocative photos and posted them to sites like Backpage.com. He really capitalized on the fact that my parents would be highly disappointed and not love me anymore. I'm dirty. He was very convincing in all of that. So basically, Loverboy scoped her out, 
made her feel comfortable. She told him that the reason she ran away was because of the rape and that she was so ashamed about it. And then he convinced her that she was absolutely correct, that if she did go home and tell her parents about the rape, they would be completely ashamed of her and that the best thing for her would be to just stick with Loverboy because he's the only person that actually has her back. Um, but let's go back to the beginning. You're, you're a successful kid, right? On a roll? Yeah. Uh, varsity soccer? And uh, wrestling, went to state in wrestling. So Violinist. You were happy? Yeah. I mean, it wasn't like a broken family. It wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't an abusive situation. No, it was, I had great parents, great siblings, good in school. So how is it, because we send the tape piece, you got a bad grade, your one sibling went to college or left, left home. What was it? What was the trigger that made you run away? Um, bullies in school. Uh, girls didn't understand why a girl would want to wrestle. Uh, and I, I, I didn't want to disappoint my parents. And so I figured just leaving would totally, you know, they can't be disappointed if I'm not there. So we talk in the piece about the fact that you were, you were raped and that changed everything for you. You, you weren't, you didn't see yourself the same no. again after that. No. No, oh, I, I, I was gone for 10 days the first time I left, and I was home for about two months, okay. and then I left again. You left again. Why did you leave that second time? Um, I just didn't, I don't know, I, I really was dealing with a lot of shame, and um, I don't think any parent knows how to, you know, take that on, and it was, uh, I just didn't feel like I belonged there. And that's, it, it, that's when, the second time when yes. the sex trafficking started happening? Yes. How do you... How do you, how does it happen, you know, in your head? How do you go from a girl who has been raped and not long ago was the, quote, normal American girl to sitting in a hotel room with, you know, your trafficker making you subject yourself to 15 men a day? It happens faster than you can imagine. It's just so much manipulation. And at one point you start believing that this is, you know, what you're meant to do. and that it's, it's not necessarily a bad thing, and then you just shut down mentally and emotionally and you just kind of go through the motions, and you don't, you don't really think about anything else, just trying to survive. And How long was the period that you were doing that? 108 days. 108 days. I'm not gonna tell you my real name because I don't want you to know who I am, but I do want you to know what happened to me. From the age of 13, I was groomed and sexually abused by 30 or 40 adult men. I don't know the exact number. Some were married. Some were teachers. Some had kids themselves. These men online told me it was completely normal for young gay guys to experiment with older guys. Hello, you're three to childline. And because the police didn't bring it up, I thought it was fine. Nothing to worry about, so I just carried on talking to them. I felt like Anyone trying to stop me was pretty much trying to stop me being gay. I rebelled against it. This was a form of grooming. They were brainwashing the 13 year old into believing that these men were the only men that could possibly understand what he was going through. These lover boys were determined to get their hands on this 13 year old. Things spiraled out of control. I just wish it had never happened. I just wish someone would have stepped in. I want to know that if this situation ever happened again, they'd know exactly what to do. But for now, I just have to hope that things will get better for boys like me. Now let's sum it all up. 
exactly how do we recognize the signs of a sex trafficking lover boy? There's a lot of trafficking that's taking place right here and it's happening in ways that we don't even see. And so there's a whole process to how trafficking takes place and um, kind of what we see in terms of the steps of exploitation is is generally this, this luring process where um, an individual who is causing the exploitation or who is maybe uh, pimping out an individual um, is doing information on, is, is researching information on this girl that he's targeting. He's searching into her life. He's trying to build a relationship with her. He's, uh, you know, figuring things out about her, her family, her vulnerabilities, her weaknesses, her strengths, and he's just learning. He's in that process. And then the next step would be the grooming process where then, you know, he is playing this boyfriend role. He's building this relationship. He is uh, making promises to her. They're in this honeymoon stage. Um, she's feeling valued and feeling loved and finding worth in places where she hasn't ever before. And those vulnerabilities or insecurities that were once present in her life are now being filled by this individual who is stepping into that role. And that's a huge piece that we often see where women later on will identify their pimp or the individual who's exploiting them as their boyfriend. And they genuinely believe that this person who was causing harm in their life actually loved and cared for them and they believe that line they buy into it and then from there on there is the process of manipulation where once that relationship is built and there's trust that is already taking place there is a lot of pushback that is then happening there's manipulation there's these empty promises of well if you just do this one thing for me if you um if you do this we'll have this money to buy this house or go on this trip or it's just this one act it's this one date it's this one guy i want you to meet with and look at everything that could come from it and this promise of a life that um is very unfulfilling really but in the moment it's these desires that these girls are searching for this worth this life that um has been promised to them and then from there on we see the exploitation that begins to take place where obviously those promises are not being fulfilled. There's then coercion that's happening, there's threat, there's often violence, things are happening without consent and uh, it is a long process. It's not this process that just happens overnight or happens within a week. There's relationships that are built, there's effort that's actually put into it, um, which often makes it difficult for the individual who's being exploited to identify quickly what's happening. So what's the problem? Why does this shit keep happening? industry was the way it was. I hadn't, I didn't know anything about it. I had never been exposed to anyone that knew anything about it. Nobody ever talked about it to me. And there we have it. That's the problem in a nutshell. Parents aren't talking to their children. They're not educating their kids on what's going on out there. They're not letting them know about grooming and about sex trafficking as a whole. And some of the parents that are talking, they're only talking to their daughters. They're not educating their sons at all. It's not that it's just that it also happens to boys. It's the fact that we need these little boys to be looking out for these little girls, as well as themselves. You need to talk to your children. Educate yourselves on exactly how these children are disappearing. Educate yourselves on what a lover boy is. Because if you see a suave, smooth-talking lover boy come through your daughter's life, you need to act fast. You need to act immediately. And your sons also need to know how to recognize these lover boys so they can put a stop to it or at least let you know what's going on. So please, everybody, take the time to educate yourselves now. Then sit down and have these conversations with your kids. Because if you don't, lover boy will. Spicy out.